Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGeek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Why? Apparently why, wait, at whoa, whoa, some whoa, point hey. in time last week. Okay, so why? I you made bring- a wager with our amazing producer, Ashley Farrell, Missouri versus Ohio State. Right. Unbeknownst to me, I forgot they even played and apparently Ohio State lost. They did. 14-3. to three. So you're wearing tiger ears as a result of that? Is it, did you lose it's, a bet? I actually couldn't get into Ohio State. That's not my fault. I apologize. So now I have to wear these for just about a few more seconds. Right, Ash? You're good. Okay. Ash says they could. So you have fulfilled your end of the bet. <laughs> Anything for Ash. If that was anybody else, I, there I know. wasn't a chance in half. I know. I mean, I, when she left those out, I said, man, you but are. for uh, you, Ash, we'll do it. I, I, wow. It's a. <laughs> It's always entertaining, isn't it? Just keep laughing at my jokes, Ashley. <laughs> she does laugh at your I know jokes. She, does. she is she is the Mike Vrabel show laugh track. There, there's no question. Um, back to work today, yep. figuring out who's going to be available to play Sunday against Jacksonville. Yep, we are, and we're excited about the preparation. We're excited to finish strong. It's what we want to do. You know, we want to we want to write our own ending here, and uh, you know, try to finish with a lot of class and, and a lot of uh, just effort and, and consistent clean football all right let's take a look at the Mike Vrabel six-pack presented by seat geek let's start with a little defense Roger McCurry and Aziz Alshire yeah there's a lot of good swarm right here you know you can see the ball gets uh, spit out there and a lot of great effort guys are running to the football you see Arden retracing you see Roger showing up you see Aziz you know running at the back hip not overrunning it um You know, a lot of great efforts throughout this game. And and again, you can see guys running to the football, Roger leveraging it, Aziz running inside out, and then here comes the rest of the guys. And, you know, when we get there, we just got to keep hammering at that football, and and it'll pop out. We've talked about Roger McCurry this year. Aziz Alshire, 153 tackles on the And counting. And counting, no doubt about it. All right, more defense. Here's Harold Landry showing up in the run game to stop a drive. Yep, and it was great uh, stop right there on, on short yardage. And that's just Harold attacking. Uh, but if you look here, I want you to see Marlon Davidson makes this play. Marlon Davidson knocks the guard two yards back into the backfield. That tight end can't come back and get Harold. So, you know, that's one of those plays that as a defensive lineman, you can make the play without making the tackle. And those are the types of plays that, you know, and you can see right there, Marlon's knocking that guy back. He can't get to Harold, and Harold comes in there and cleans it up. Yeah, that's Shaq Mason he's hitting right there. That's no great pad level. Yeah, that's uh, that's good luck by number 92. He's playing good football for the Titans. All right, play number three, early third quarter. How about some Derrick Henry for 16 yards? Yeah, well, we're able to stay on track, and we get the late push there as Derrick gets the edge and, you know, trying to get everything he can there. And, you know, those are just, you know, we, we have to get more of these. You know, we're able to get Dylan up to the second level. Um, you can see now uh, Traylon gets in there, gets a great block on a safety, and, and, and big OJ on the edge there gets just enough to the end and, and then doesn't hold him. You know, sometimes you see some holding penalties out there, so he gave him a late shove. That puts Derrick Henry over 1,000 yards for the season. In the last six years, he's been over 1,000 in five of those seasons. The only year he didn't make it was the year he was injured two seasons ago, and he had 937. Incredible five-year run for Derrick Henry. Let's see DeAndre Hopkins go over 1,000 yards for the seventh time in his career on this play, Coach. Yeah, and again, we're able to progress, you know, and Hop does a great job of feeling that, that linebacker sitting there in the zone. Ryan does a nice job of throwing it, you know, on his inside. And so when he throws it on his inside, Hop knows that's the way that the quarterback wants me to roll and to come out of it. And, and that's, you know, that's a pretty good relationship right there, really good understanding, not throwing him over into the linebacker, but throwing it on his inside shoulder. 
you know, and then you could see there, Hop knows, okay, I'm going to drop step inside away from the defender. DeAndre Hopkins had seven catches for 72 yards in the game on Sunday. More Harold Landry here, a quarterback sack. He's got 10 and a half on the year after this one. Well, this is just a nice job here of trying to work together to, you know, affect the ball and, you know, maybe we'll get it out here, but, you know, the coverage does a nice job. And, and again, Harold keeps going and sometimes you, you get sacks on your first effort, sometimes the second, and sometimes your third. So, you know, we have to just keep rushing and that's a case of that right there. He stays on his feet and able to take, take the quarterback down. Love a sack for minus 12 too. Those are great. Back Those are up. good. The only thing better is when you're able to knock it out right there and pick it up and run it in. All right, sixth play of the six pack. Ryan Tannehill to Chigakonkwo for 21. Yeah, and finds Chig here in the middle of the field. And, you know, again, Chig's you know, been able to take advantage of those opportunities that we've, you know, that he's earned, um, you know, the back part of the season. You know, and I know that, you know, he, his consistency and his preparation, you know, has allowed him to, to continue to stay there and help us. And again, he chips for us and he blocks for us. And, you know, we're able to get him the ball in some of these catch and run opportunities. Chigakakwa with 52 catches on the season for the Tennessee Titans. He's the second leading receiver behind DeAndre Hopkins, who has 68 so far on the campaign. Titans getting ready to play Jacksonville, but we've got one more look at last Sunday's game because when we come back, it's time to go to the... Vrabel Strader. Vrabel Strader. That's exactly right. We're going to take a look at a big play at the end of the first half, and Coach will break it down for us when we continue from the Bet MGM studio with the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Stay with us. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM studio. So glad to have you with us as it's time for... America's favorite, the Vrabel Strader. All right, we're going to take a look at a play at the end of the first half that was a big gainer to wide receiver Chris Moore. Show us how this works so well. Well, we're down, we're down here. Um, you know, we, we need some chunks, right? So, so for us, in order to get some, some chunk yardage, we have to be able to take, you know, some guys here down through and, and work some sort of three-layer release here. You know, they end up clouding over here to hop, so that side's dead. We'll come back to that later. That's what got us in field goal range. But what you can see here is Chig's going to end up working his way out after he chips. So Chig's going to chip, and then we get a layered route. And so what you can do is you can see here that Chris is running through the middle, and this split safety look here on the cloud forces this guy to get over here and squeeze. He doesn't quite get there. So you've got Chris running through the middle. You've got Traylon bending in behind there. And again, if they all drop off, you still have Chig here. Now you got to hold up. You got to hold up in protection, you know. And so we get the chip initially. And again, we got to sit down. We got to stay inside out. But give Ryan a lot of credit, you know, for being able to put that ball up in there. And this is one thing you see all the time from Chris Moore as we take a look at the end zone. Okay, as we take a look at the end zone is Chris Moore is going up to get the football. That's the one thing I appreciate about, appreciate about Chris is that he goes and he's able to high point the football. So here, there's going to be traffic. You know, Ryan could probably have waited out just another, you know, half a second and hit trailing coming in. But from the end zone, you know, what you're going to see is a, is a layered route here. Chig short, trailing deep. You know, so it's this, excuse me is going to be Chris clearing through, trailing, bending in here, Chig chipping, and then being here. So there's your three-level inward breaking route. Is the design of the play to go to Chris? It's design is going to throw to the guy that's open. Okay. And now I would say that nine times out of ten you watch around the league, most of these passes are going here. And if this safety pushes early, now you're going to throw the bench over here or the corner uh, to, to Hopkins. But it gives the quarterback – Okay, different levels down the field at this end of half. So Ryan, in your guess, picked Chris because he wanted to give him a chance to go because make Because the play. middle of the field was open. Sometimes okay. you see, you know, that there's a mic that runs through the middle, you know, and he could be here waiting for it. This safety was over here in the half part of the field. So Ryan felt like, okay, I'm going to take this thing down here knowing that we're going to have leverage on that half field safety. 
as opposed to that Mike being down there deep. Gain of 32. Yep, it set up a field goal. All right, when we come back, it's time for our Epic Western Spotlight, and we will feature Chris Moore, learn more about him and running. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by C. Chris Moore can run. Yes, he's fast, but this isn't about speed. This is about a football player who can run and run and run some more. I don't know that I've ever seen a Titan who never seems to get tired like Chris Moore. He's amazing. He can chase down a deep ball, cover a punt, run a reverse, block someone 20 yards down the field. It doesn't matter. He never seems to be breathing hard. At 30 years old, Chris Moore is a total professional who does whatever the job requires. But in the end, his real gift is his amazing ability to run. In this week's Epic Western Spotlight, we feature Chris Moore, who makes it clear, I love to run, I can run all day. Every year I'm here, I keep getting better, but I'm definitely, this is uh, the best Chris Moore. As I get older, I feel like I'm getting more opportunities to go out there and play more receiver. Uh, early in my career, I was just a special teams guy and just going out there on special teams. But as I get older, they let me play receiver. I'm building more trust with these coaches and the organization. So the more opportunities I get, I feel like my numbers will just keep going up. I know my job, I, I hardly mess up, to be honest, to have MAs. And then as far as my skill set, I'm just a fast guy who will clear stuff open for other guys and even take top off the defense to get the ball myself. a system that works for me, so I, I pick up stuff pretty quick. I feel like that's one of the things I struggled with in early in my career, because when you're a young guy, it's, it's a whirlwind. It's just everything's being thrown at you. It was tough at first, but once I found what works for me, uh, I feel like it's been way easier since then. I'm very big on nutrition and what I eat. And then as far as like just learning a new playbook always, I have a how I study. I'm a big flashcard guy. Like I'm always flashing through flashcard side. That's how I learned the offense. And, that's the big thing that, for me, that gets me going. The players out there making the decisions at high speed, but we can have a very successful game. So, I mean, that's what I like about it. It gives us a lot of freedom to go out there and just play football and play fast. And I want my teammates to know, like, when I'm on the field with them, that they can trust me to do my job. I see you, baby. Let's go. That's how you make a play. And that they don't have to worry about me on the field. So, I love to run. Like, I can run all day. Chris Moore, number 11 for the Tennessee Titans. You said when he got here, I've enjoyed coaching him. This just in OTAs, you said, I wish he'd been here sooner. Yeah, absolutely. I really just have enjoyed uh, getting to know Chris and his family, um, who he is as a teammate. He's an amazing teammate. There's nothing that he won't do uh, for the team. Uh, he plays a lot of positions. You saw him on special teams. You see him you know, on offense. He's willing to block. You know, we talked about him. We saw him earlier on the, on the, on the Telestrator. You know, it goes up and gets the football. So it's made some really big plays for us this year. Chris Moore averaging over 20 yards a catch this season for the Tennessee Titans. Coming up, kids ask Coach Vrabel. That's right around the corner. Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek continues from the Bet MGM studio after this. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee aims to create life-changing wishes for children with critical illnesses. And recently, the Titans were given the opportunity to participate in making six-year-old Mason, Mason's wish come true. Last April, Mason was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. He also underwent an emergency heart surgery before undergoing chemotherapy. His wish, to spend a couple of days with his very favorite football team. So today we're granting the first part of Mason's wish and he really wanted a Titans experience and that's what we've given him today. Buddy, good, good seeing you. Henry. What's up, man? how you doing? He knows exactly like the 23rd, 24th are his Titans days. I tried to get him to do like Disney or something else, but I was like, no, this is like Mason's Disney World. This is like all he cares about. This is, hey, it's a two point play, so we got to get in, all right? All right, here we go. Go, 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 go. Hey. Hey. 
That's a touchdown, right? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. You know, me, him, and his family, and uh, you know, just sit down and have a conversation with him. I think the biggest one to him beat me like, um, I think it was like 40 something to eight in Madden, so you know, he's pretty good at Madden. Look, 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 you ready to laugh now? <laughs> Golly. See a smile on these kids' face, especially like a, a kid like Mason who's dealing with, you know, something way bigger than, um, you know, the problem that. Sometimes I could have, especially with the game of football. So <laughs> just being able to, to be around him and see that smile on his face means a lot to me. So every kid who goes through what Mason's going through finds a different reason to fight and a different reason to be inspired. And for Mason, it's the Titans. Tighten up on me! One, two, wait! Tighten up! Good job, Mason, and good job, Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee, and good job by you and the football team yeah. making that experience all, happen. All, all, all the credit goes to our, our team, our organization. I mean, and obviously getting to know Mason and his family. Like, Mason has a heart of a warrior, and um, that was the best breakdown. We have a lot of different breakdowns, but that one right there was the best guest breakdown that we've ever had. So we told Mason that, and uh, he just has a very amazing uh, personality and you could see how he interacted with the players, and the moment was not too big for him. I meant, he's like, hey, what's up, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, time now for Kids Ask Coach Vrabel. Let's take a look. Hi, Coach Vrabel. My name is Stella, and I'm from Dixon. Can you do this? I could do that. Can you do that? I, really? I could. I bet now? I could. I'm not going to do it. Now. I mean, but no, I'm not saying like right this second, I mean, but I mean, at this point in your life, yeah, you I could still that. do that. Yeah. A round off, I could do that. Seriously? Yeah, I used to do the back, you know, hand, yeah. You could do a back Yo foot? Younger days, you know. Younger Mike. Wow. Not 48 year old version. I'll do that tomorrow on the field. And I should bring your camera. All right. Well, when we come back, maybe that was that'll good, be one Stella. of the Nissan keys to success. Seems like it would be the Nissan Key to Traction. Uh, the Mike Vrabel Show continues. Stay with us. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek from the Bet MGM studio now moves to the Nissan Keys to Success this Sunday against Jacksonville. Let's bring him up here. Number one, provide momentum and field position on special teams. And you have the ability to do that on special teams. There's so much time and distance that gets traveled, whether we, we cover a kickoff that's inside the 20 or we don't cover a punt very well, and then they're able to get the ball back around midfield. Th those, are, those are critical momentum-changing, field position-changing plays, just like you saw you know, Caleb. He's trying to force the punt and runs into the kicker, and so – Instead of a, you know, a stop on defense, we have to go back out there. So those are the things that we have to continue to do and then eliminate the, the mistakes and the things that you know, ultimately get you beat. Speaking of mistakes, key number two is no unforced errors on offense. We have to stay ahead of the chains. We have to be able to you know, keep it in third and manageable, third and short, pick those up. Um, you know, we're going to have to hit some X plays along the way, but as obviously just not beating ourselves – uh, whether that's penalties, missed assignments, you know, operationally, you know, 12 men in the huddle, uh, being great from, from coaching to, to playing to executing, uh, that'll be huge on offense. Got to run the ball? Well, we'll have to. You know what I mean? That's always something that, you know, in order to possess the football, which you have to against a good team, you know, that's something that we're going to have to be able to do just to be able to stay balanced and set everything else up. All right. The third Nissan key to success Make them earn everything, be great tacklers in space. Yep. So they like to get their playmakers the ball in space, whether that's Ingram, okay, that's Etienne. And so we have to make sure, you know, whether Kirk's back, they do that with him. And, you know, the Agnew is not going to be out there. But, you know, we, we have to go tackle them. You know, they'll dish it out there and they'll see if you can tackle them. And it's seven, eight yards, and that's how they stay ahead of the chains. The last one is making sure that we, we don't have any unforced errors, much like on offense, you know, the double moves, the wheel routes, the switch verts, that we're covering them and that we make them earn it and there's nothing cheap. Keep them in front of you and get them on the Absolutely. ground. Absolutely. We've been great in the red zone. And so 
we'll continue to rely on that, and, uh, and we're going to get some turnovers, and it's going to help us win the game. Does it make any difference in your preparation whether or not Trevor Lawrence is a quarterback? Oh, I don't think. I mean, I think the plays that we're going to study are going to be the plays that we're going to study. Yeah, we'll see if it's Trevor Lawrence or Franklin, Tennessee's own C.J. Beathard. Titans against the Jaguars coming up this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Kickoff set for 12.02. Titans countdown is on the air at 11 a.m. on your favorite Titans radio station, including 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for making Thanks, Tuesday everybody. nights fun. Good night, everybody.